This is a demonstration of the United Imaging MarketWise version 10.0. First I'm going to open up our software uh, with our desktop shortcut. And when I do that, you will notice that the banner at the top opens up so that nothing is cropped off. Um, the 9.0 versions and previous versions uh, have been opening up partially cropped off because of the upgrades of the OS's. So we fixed that. So now, um, when you open up uh, a patient, you'll notice that all of the tools here are the same. They're, they're not reconfigured. They're all in the same places that they were before. So we're going to open up a patient, and you will notice that when I type in a name, uh, the, the box on the right does not populate. Um, the, starting with 9.0 and also with version 10.0, there is a HIPAA compliancy so that when you type in the name, it does not auto-populate over here on the right. You can type in the uh, entire patient's name and then hit the search button, or you could type in you know, just the last name and hit the search button. But it won't search for the patient's name until you hit the search button. And that is one of the HIPAA compliancies that we have added uh, starting with 9.0 to the United Imaging MarketWise. So if you were to open a patient chart, and let's, let's, um, let's show you the, how the new tools work over here. If I were to open up a patient picture, and we'll open up the original picture next to it. And I'm going to make a copy of the original picture because I can't make changes to the original picture. You don't want to make changes to the original picture. So I will set them side by side here on my screen. So if I were to print this picture for a patient, uh, I would want to print a, a disclaimer on there. So under the annotate dropdown, I will choose disclaimer. It's in the same place that it was before with the previous 9.0 version. I'm going to click on disclaimer. And that's going to open up a box. Previous to this, you had to access configuration files in the Uniplast folder to add a disclaimer to a picture. Now you don't have to. Uh, you can type in whatever you want uh, your disclaimer to say. Um, and then you, you choose the point size. Now the point size is going to vary um, for how, how big your picture is. Uh, the, the smaller the file size that you've imported into the United Imaging System, the smaller the point size will need to be. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this uh, disclaimer into my picture on the right. And here it is. I can move this around put it anywhere on this picture that I want. I also have the ability to right click this picture or the, the text and choose text properties. If I wanted to drop out that white background I can. I can choose fill and it uh, defaults to opaque. I'm going to choose transparent and click OK. Now it has dropped out that white background. So uh, if you're going to do that, obviously you need to move the, the type around to where you can um, see it so it's not on a black background. So uh, you also have the ability to move this uh, type around and change the way that it's set up if you wanted to uh, just keep that type on the background itself. So that's just using these uh, little uh, white um, boxes, you can move it around like that. But let's say I want to take uh, back uh, um, that fill and, and add it in again. So I'm going to go back to fill and I'm going to ask it to put in the opaque background and say OK. So there it is again. Now you also have the ability to change um, your font. Um, you've got different kinds of fonts here. There, there's a number of different uh, um, adjustments that you can make to this type. Um, you know, feel free to play with it and find what you like best. Um, you, you can change all these things over here. So go ahead and play with it and see what works best for you. So now I've added my disclaimer. And uh, now I want to add a label. So I'm going to go back to the annotate drop down, choose label. Now label opens up its uh, own box as well. So uh, up here, I mean, it tells you what to do. It says to enter the text 
click Add to Save as a predefined, and then OK to apply. So um, let's go ahead and add a new one. I'm going to just type in Test. I'm going to click Add, and you'll see it appeared down here. So it tells me that I just need uh, to click OK to apply it. It's going to apply it at this point size, 35. I'm going to hit OK. Now, and you'll notice I have Test highlighted. I'm going to hit OK. It dropped it over here. I can move this around. If I don't like it, I'm just going to hit the delete button. Now I'll hit the delete button with those little white boxes around the text. Hit delete. I'm going to go back to annotate, go back to label, and um, let's say I want it a, a bigger size. I'll, I want it 45 point size. So I'll hit te test again. I've changed my point size to 45. Hit OK. Now it's bigger. I can uh, have the ability to make these changes to the text over here, just like I did the disclaimer at the top. One of the nice things is I can go back here to the, the disclaimer that I already did and move it around again if I want, go back to the label, move it around however I'd like. So whenever I'm done with all of that, um, and it's just the way that I want it, and I want to print it out and make that text or that type permanent on there, I would go to the Make Permanent, and it will ask you if you want to, um, if you want to make that, that modification, and you can say yes or no, um, and then save it to the patient chart. So let's, uh, I can say, I'm going to save this uh, modified to the disk before closing. So I just uh, saved my copy. Um, here is my imaged picture. Uh, if I close this, it will ask me if I want to save modified. This time I'm going to say no. I don't necessarily want to change, uh, save these um, disclaimers and labels that I put on. Uh, so I will click no, and it will not save them. And you can see that here. If I wanted to, I could save these and then print them for my patient with the disclaimer and the labels on them. So uh, you'll also notice when you look at uh, the type on the, uh, in the patient charts, the type is cleaned up and, and looks real nice and sharp. We've, uh, we've changed the GUI uh, fonts so that they aren't ragged looking anymore. They're nice and sharp looking with the version 10.0. But I like to point out that the primary reason for this upgrade uh, to version 10.0 is because the last upgrade 9.0 was done I think it was back in 2012 so that's been a few years we were in desperate need of making an upgrade to uh, the program so that's what we've done and the primary reason for doing this is to uh, for the use of the IO methods that are used to work with the communication of the program with the database um, since the last uh, upgrade wasn't um, was back in 2012, the operating systems have changed since then, and we needed to update the the file communication system with the program. So that is the primary reason for doing this upgrade. Doing this upgrade with um, the improvement to the file I/O methods has also uh, given us the ability to have persistence and that means moving forward we have updated our program and we can continue to move forward and improve the program over the years with newer versions um, and that is what our intention is. So um, that is the version 10.0 upgrade just some uh, cosmetic things, some little extra tools in, under annotate with the disclaimer and the label, and a cleaner way of looking, uh, a cleaner way uh, that, with the, the program looking, and a better way of communicating with the file system. That's the version 10.0.